guys and welcome back or welcome to my channel to a brand new video in today's video I'm going to be discussing on how to begin recovery from anorexia so I see so many videos obviously and I even make them myself on how to do lots of different things in recovery from anorexia such as how to deal with extreme hunger how to deal with bloating lots of different things but that's what happens within recovery so how do you actually begin to choose recovery how do you begin recovery properly? So today I'm just going to discuss a few steps on how I would recommend people begin recovery. So my first step is to tell someone. So this could be anyone you trust. This could be a friend, sister, parent, guardian, whoever, teacher. You can tell whoever, but I feel like you need to tell someone. You can't keep this to yourself. And I promise you it'll be 10 times harder doing everything solely on your own and it's so important that you have support around you during these difficult times so once you've told loved ones I'm pretty sure they might recommend some advice to you too obviously people who don't really know much things about it it'll probably be a shock to them and you have to be prepared that it might be a shock to them but a lot of the times parents already kind of hint on and parents already kind of realize our guardians or friends start to already realize that there's an issue and you yourself has to realize that there's an issue you have to accept that you have a problem and you have to accept that this goes deeper than just lack of body confidence or whatever so you might go to your your general GPs like your practice or whatever doctors and they might tell you and they might say that you know you might have lack of body confidence come back in a few weeks time and we can see if you've improved anymore this is what happened to me I went to the doctors expecting that they would straight away you know refer me maybe to like a therapist or whatever and they didn't they basically said that I had lack of body confidence which in fairness I did but I knew from well that my problems run, run deeper than just lack of body confidence. So then I went back in a few weeks time and then they referred me to CAMS. So already, if you are going to do that, then it'll probably the same thing happen to you. We referred to a service such as adult services or CAMS or whatever. And when you go to them services, I recommend, this is where like the main thing happens. This is where you choose, you have to choose recovery. And I just want to give some advice on how to how to be guided throughout this kind of stages and how to fully begin it because obviously personally my experience is when I went to CAMS I did not want to recover I didn't even know how to recover to be honest CAMS can give you some advice they can they are really good at doing that they're they're kind of trained in that areas but you have to want recovery you have to really want it because no one else can change your mindset and no one else can change your through your thought process or whatever than you you're the one who controls your brain not them they can say whatever they want to say but you're the one who decides what happens you're the one that takes the action so the first thing i did was start a recovery journal and this is so helpful it's basically like a diary and you're able to write everything down in this little recovery journal so my first thing that I wrote in my recovery journal is pros and cons of recovery. And after I did this, I realized there were so many more positives than cons. Obviously there were some cons, but there were so many more positives. And I was able to realize that recovery isn't all that bad. It might be scary and it might be the fear of the unknown, but I was certain of these things that would happen. And then on the next page, I wrote mot motivations to recover. So one of my main motivations, <laughs> I can't even speak. One of my main motivations was my dog, which sounds stupid, but it was because my dog, he senses when I'm stressed. He senses when there's tension, when I'm upset and he gets stressed himself when I'm stressed. And I don't want my dog basically dying of a heart attack because of me. So that's one kind of thing that was a main focus for me and the fact that I want to live to watch him grow up and I want to live like I'm not being funny but my dog to me is like my baby and if you don't have a pet that might sound really stupid to you but he is literally like a little baby to me 
another motivation was obviously I didn't want to die. And I knew found well, and I was told that the only route, and this is true, the only route that anorexia will end to is death. There is no in the middle kind of thing. It's choosing life or death. So once I had motivation, so I had like my dog, my family, I want to live, I want to travel, I had all these different things, I want my education, I had all these kind of different motivations and it just really like I wanted to be happy again and once I had motivations down then I went on the next page and I wrote down fear foods and safe foods because these are important things that you have to acknowledge. So you might not really know them just yet if you're in the really, really beginning of the recovery, but over time you will start to realize that you have safe foods and fear foods. And you'll be able to add to this little collection of fear foods and safe foods, it's like, and make it like a list. And then in time of your recovery, you'll be able to start crossing off them fear foods and then moving them over to safe foods. And you will just be able to see your progress go really well and then inside my recovery journal I was had like a diary area where I wrote down basically a diary and this was so much good because I felt as if I was able to express all of my emotions on this page I feel as if I could even though I had a therapist at this time yes I could talk to her but did I trust her that's the real thing I didn't so I couldn't tell her absolutely everything because I was like, oh, if I tell her this, she's definitely going to send me away. And it was kind of that fear kind of thing. So having this little diary of mine, I was able to just write down everything. And just write down all of my emotions and stuff like that. And it was just really good to get everything out there instead of keeping it all inside because I didn't really want to pass on the stress to my family or my friends or whatever. So having this in this little journal is really good. And I'm able to look back now and see how much I've improved, which is really good. And my next tip is to write a breakup letter from Anorexia. So I actually did this quite recently. I wrote a letter saying, Dear Anna, and I wrote a bunch of different things. And I will probably read it out in another video actually because I feel like the letter isn't really important, but I wrote a long letter and then on the end I put, and this is your eviction notice from my brain. And it's it's basically, imagine your eating disorder is a person. And I know that not everyone likes to do this, but personally it helps me and it helps many other people. Imagine that your ED is a person and you're in a really bad relationship, almost like an abusive relationship, because that's what it is basically. And you have to write a breakup letter. And I just put everything I fought down on this piece of paper. And I just keep it with me. And every time I'm upset or whatever, I just go back and I read through this letter. And it really helps me. And I just think it's such a good idea to do. Like another step, like I mentioned, is to have, uh, like basically separate your ED from you and see it as another person. And you can call this person, you can draw it even. Um, you could draw it in your recovery journal, like maybe it's like a bad creature, like, I don't know, like a snake or something, I don't know. And then on the next page, draw your recovery animal, which are like your, just a recovery kind of thing that will go with you. So for example, I actually chose this when I went out with my friend um, for a reason, it's an elephant. And I decided that my recovery animal is an elephant. And the main reason because of this was because my nana, who has unfortunately passed away, she gave me this little elephant statue when I was little. And elephants have always been my favourite kind of animal. They've always been my favourite animal. I've always had elephants throughout my entire life. And my nana gave me a little statue that was Lucky Elephant. And it's meant to face the door and it's meant to bring luck to you and stuff. And then when I saw this in the shop, it says that it's a Lucky Elephant. And instantly, I instantly just thought of my nana. And just seeing this, and so now I'm able to wear this. And not only think of my friend, but also think in a reminder of recovery. So now elephants, like my guiding animal. Elephants and butterflies. Because elephants, obviously my nana's favorite animal, and then butterflies are my granddad's favorite. 
so I'm able to use that kind of thing as motivation as well and every time I look at my hand or whatever I always remember that recovery and I feel like that is so important to have something like that. Some other little tips is I recommend getting blind weigh-in at CAMS if you're going to a CAMS service um, just because you don't have to see your weight because once again the number does not define you at all and you really don't need to know. They're the ones that can keep track of that. They're the ones that can deal with all the numbers. Follow, if they give you a meal plan, then follow it. Or at least go along the lines of that. Or you could start mini mode. And if you want to know more about the mini mode, I'll leave a link in the description below of my video on what's mini mode. And that might be a really good way in beginning recovery. And the guidelines are there for you, so you don't need to create your own kind of gallery goal or whatever. And I just think that's really, really good to have. Also, if you don't feel like calorie counting, then... Or maybe you want a calorie count, but maybe it's more like an obsessive kind of reason behind it. Then maybe ask your, your mom or whoever to calorie count it for you. Take off that stress for you. And this might be also really hard, but I kind of wish I did this earlier, was give your parents control. Instead of you stressing out over meals, what you're going to have, um, how you're going to prepare it, weighing out food, just give it to your parents. I really wish I did this. And I feel like if I did this like sooner, I would have probably been recovered a lot quicker. And I know that for me personally, my ED was all about control and I really wanted that control. But honestly, I find it so much easier when I'm able to just give that control now to someone else. In early stage of recovery, I wouldn't dare let anyone prepare anything. It was all me. I'd always go for the lower color options. But now, I can, I'm can. i able to give control to my parents and stuff. I still make my own food now. But if I was able, if say my mom came with me with a sandwich, I'd eat it. Because the, the things like this happen in time in recovery. And although it might be extremely scary, just listen to what your team has to say. Take into account your team is saying, but also take into account what your brain is saying. Because remember, it's your recovery, no one else's. Don't let them kind of decide something else for you. But remember that what you might think is best might not actually be best. And if they recommend that you might need to go to an inpatient, a hospital, whatever, then do take that on board and do take that into account. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, but before I want to go, I just want to remind you that be prepared for recovery. Be prepared that as straight as you recover, you can't just expect everything to go perfect because it takes time. But I'm telling you, like I mentioned before, it's so worth it. And honestly, you're on the right track to getting your life back. And your life is worth living. And your life is so much better without that ED voice. You are not a slave to your ED. You cannot let that thing control you. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it helps someone out there. And goodbye.